<laughs> I like Spurgeon. No idea what he's going to say next. No idea what the Lord may say through him. It's been an interesting day and a fun day and very busy day, which is surprising for me because although all of my days usually go, well, you know, 10 hours or more, <laughs> I like it, you know, but this one has been exceptionally busy in a short period of time, which amazes me sometimes because, boy, you know, I knew God wanted me to take one day off, but when I came back from that one day off, it was like, wow, I got so much to do, and then all of a sudden it was like I was given more to do, and bingo, because I had rested that one extra day, which I don't have any days I rest, so I did rest one day, and kind of got away from computers and sitting too much, and did other things that I really was, I think, able to accomplish a lot more in a short period of time. So. If that's a good word for you, then whatever you need to do, if it does exist for seven days a week, then try to get something done ahead of time so that way you could take a little more time to rest on whatever day you choose to rest or suffer. <laughs> you know, advice is just like anything else. You could take it or leave it, you know, and if you want to be stupid, you could be stupid too. <laughs> that's the way advice is. It doesn't matter whether you do it or not, it's up to you. And that's how God works, is that, you know, if we meet with him in the morning and check out what he wants for us during the day, hey, you know, it's the easy way. If we don't, well, <laughs> you blew it. <laughs> in Spurgeon, fellow saints with the fellow citizens with the saints, Ephesians. What is meant by our being citizens in heaven? It means that we are under heaven's government. Christ, the King of heaven, reigns in our hearts. Our daily prayer is, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The proclamations issued from the throne of glory are freely received by us. The decrees of the great King we cheerfully obey. Then, as citizens of the New Jerusalem, we share heaven's honors. The glory which belongs to beatified saints belongs to us for we are already sons of God, already princes of the blood imperial. Already we wear the spotless robe of Jesus' righteousness. Already we have angels for our servitors, saints for our companions, Christ for our brother, God for our Father, and a crown of immortality for our reward. We share the honors of citizenship, for we have come to the General Assembly and the Church of the Firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. As citizens, we have common rights to all the property of heaven. Ours are its gates of pearl and walls of chrysolite. Ours the azure light of the city that needs no candle nor light of the sun. Ours the river of water of life and the twelve manner of fruits which grow on the, tri the trees planted on the banks thereof. There is not in heaven that belongeth not to us. Things present or things to come all are ours. Also as citizens of heaven, we enjoy in its delights. Do they there rejoice over sinners that repent and prodigals that have returned? So do we. Do they chant the glories of triumphant grace? We do the same. Do they cast their crowns at Jesus' feet? Such honors as we have, we cast there too. Are they charmed with his smile? Is it not less sweet to us who dwell below? Do they look forward, waiting for his second advent, his coming again? We also look and long for his appearing. If then we are thus citizens of heaven, let our walk and let our actions be consistent with our high dignity. Sometimes when Spurgeon gets into it, it's like, wow, that's basically kind of interesting to put it into that perspective. I remember a very long time ago, and I mean, way back when. When I was, I think, reading this very devotional by Spurgeon, and uh, it, it hit me. I was, I was walking along in a grocery store of all places, and I think I had maybe two dollars to my name. <laughs> I don't even know if I had that much money, but uh, I was kind of like, you know, well, okay, you know, so I'm broke, you know, and 
There are all these people with, you know, grocery shopping, grocery baskets, shopping for their probably weekly supplies. And uh, I got in line, you know, and I was standing there in line, and suddenly it hit me. I looked at all their baskets full of groceries, and, you know, I had maybe two or three items, and I looked around, and nobody was smiling, and nobody had any real joy on their face. And everybody seemed, in fact, pretty preoccupied and kind of down. And it's funny, because about that time, God spoke to me and said, is this any way for an heir to act? And I knew exactly what he meant. It was, it, I started laughing. I couldn't believe it. I thought, you know what? It's true. Is this any way for the Son of God or a Son of God to act? Standing here in line, bummed out, and I just started smiling. And I know I had this glow about me at that moment in time that I just felt so warm, so content. I knew I had to be glowing. And I'm sure people were going, what in the world is wrong with that person? And I, and I think about it now and I think, that's the problem. Nothing in the world is wrong with this person. It's what's right in heaven that's wrong with this person. And that's what I was doing, was I was wrong for the world, but right for heaven. So if that could be any enjoyment for you, you know, to recognize that what Spurgeon says is true about you, then recognize also that you are a citizen of heaven. This is a strange land you're passing through, and you're a stranger. It ain't your home. <laughs> if you make it your home, you might wind up with your home in a place where it's going and you are not. You are destined for New Jerusalem. You are meant to be with God. You are called to follow Him. What you do with your life is up to you and Him. But know this, if you have salvation, then He purchased you with a price. You are not your own. But he will bring you to a place of salvation that you'll know you're an heir and a son of God with him by the promises he's made to us. Enjoy it. I do.